Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava, and this is Speed Play Papal Italy number 20. We left off having occupied the French nation, our armies are all along our border, and we're ready to begin moving out into Poland, Lithuania, and then Russia. We're going to get whatever spare forces we can to the border to make a devastating thrust into Hungary and from Hungary forward. So we're going to get an army, it's not entirely uh, well made, and we go ahead and just bring all of these forces just forward. We're also going to clear out most of these Ottoman rebels except for the large stack which will hopefully rove over to their capital. Now we're going to try to defeat the Ottoman navy and manage to get it so that we can make our troops move. Uh, unfortunately, we are attacked by the British so we can't clear out the Ottoman navy. We're going to have to fight the British navy instead. Alright, now our armies are working fairly well. We have socialists in power so we put a conservative party. Unfortunately, it's the wrong one doesn't matter, we are holding another election anyway, it's just a minor inconvenience. So unfortunately this naval battle is not going very well, and they have many more dreadnoughts than we do, so we're going to pull out of that. We cannot lose our entire navy, although at this point the Mediterranean is now open to enemy shipping, and quite frankly we have lost the naval war. If we're able to, I'm going to try to build new dreadnoughts to, repa to replace those lost, Ultimately, though, it is now going to be a battle fought almost entirely on land. We're cleaning out the Hungarians fairly easily. That's not too surprising. We're going to start pulling our forces away from the uh, border to all the neutrals. Hopefully, since the Poles and Russians don't have very many troops left, they don't have any troops in the neutral territories. Now, that isn't a very safe bet, as they've been pouring through the neutral territories this entire war, Although, since they have so few troops, even if they do get through, it shouldn't be something that devastates us. We're also going to move armies up in a line, so we have uh, just a line of control blocking them off from the neutrals. And while the Poles and Russians have very small armies left, um, while the Poles and Russians have very small armies left, Chinese forces haven't even shown up yet, and they had around 3 million men. I'm not sure if they still have that amount. Ultimately, though, uh, that's going to be a concern is that as we press into the east we will start running into some very stiff resistance. Uh, that all being said, we're not facing any real uh, opposition at this point, so we're just going to keep roving forward. Now I notice that the uh, North Germans are actually pressing into England, so we're going to go ahead and support them. A British Navy showed up but backed off, and now we have 150,000 men give or take, more or less trapped on the British Isles, and that's going to be a high-risk, high-reward situation. Either we're going to lose that entire army, or we're going to win and defeat the British in their home islands, despite not having naval superiority. It's ironic, they control the Mediterranean, and they brought enough of their fleet away from their home islands that they might lose them in return. So this is where the majority of combat's occurring. The Russians are still trying to press through, and we're not really letting them do anything like that. Our armies are starting to just, con or well, not starting, they're continuing to press through Poland, Lithuania. And while we are winning these battles against the British, we're taking a lot of casualties, to the extent that those 150,000 have really attritioned away. The Ottomans are going through even more rebellions. We're going to leave the group occupying their capital, and only their capital. Every other group we are going to just destroy so we don't have to re-siege. The French have a massive rebellion of fascists, so we'll have to deal with that when we get the opportunity. Our forces, we're going to just pull back so they can reinforce. Uh, the Russians are attacking us. We're generally moving forward. Uh, the Russian attack probably won't matter too much, though. The first Chinese troops. We are still winning against the British, although we really need to get our forces back up to full strength. And we're not even facing combat in Poland, Lithuania, except now against the Chinese in significant numbers. Also, there was a slight rebellion in Istanbul. I believe it may have been a rebellion from our troops. If so, that's very worrying. We do continue to beat the British. You'll see that our army is very undermanned, and they keep escaping, which is terrible news. So we really have to defeat this British army if we're going to have any luck moving forward. And we're going to just take this hodgepodge mix of troops and defeat all the French rebels, as uh, we really don't want the French to just get their country back. And now we're facing a communist rebellion throughout our countryside. Luckily there are no communists in Rome. Italy is probably going to go insurgent for some amount of time. 
I'm going to try to just rush armies over from Anatolia, and luckily a large number of them make it, as for whatever reason the Turks were just not bothering to block the Straits. So we're going to use those armies and the armies we've uh, gathered from elsewhere to just defeat these rebellions as best we can. Uh, we can't change our ruling party for six more months or one election cycle, so we're not going to bother with that just now. All of our remaining forces are just going to go into the general thrust forward. We've been keeping troops on the border of the uh, neutrals, such as Romania, because the Russians love to funnel that area filled with troops. At this point, we need the troops on the front line more than we need them guarding Romania. And so our armies are moving forward. We are fighting the Chinese in a significant battle, and there are a giant number of Chinese forces behind that. We immediately charge in and attack them. Hopefully their armies are bad enough that we'll be able to do that. Africa is just a cesspool of rebellion. We're going to have to leave it like that for now and reinforce our armies in Great Britain. Throughout the front, we are now making a massive push against that large Chinese army and our forces are just marching forward wherever they're able to. This war is now going to get to the point where it's very straightforward and mainly just clicking armies and sending them further east with the occasional emergency to distract us. And we're going to pull our forces to the Armenian border just to be safe that the Russians can't move through, although they haven't yet, so maybe they don't have the ability. We're going to surround that massive Chinese army so we can hopefully just destroy it entirely. And from there, there's just a few scattered Russian groups and our general march forward, the great march of progress that will take our armies all the way to China. We just got some jingoism, and we're going to run in and support those Germans. So let's go ahead and see what we can get. We can definitely free Aleppo, although uh, we could go after other things. We will go after Aleppo for now. We're also going to justify a conquest war against India. Now, I'm tempted to wait because we also have to go to war with Egypt once more, but I don't think it's worth it. We're going to go to war with India and add a war goal against the British to free India. So what we'll do is, when it comes to it, India will offer us peace to annex them, and the British or their alliance will offer us peace uh, where we get India freed. Meanwhile, we are winning a massive battle against the British in London. We have surrounded their army, so hopefully this will be the final thing. And the battle is really just starting to drag on. Uh, not terribly surprisingly, the British are very keen on defending their home islands and their capital. The Chinese are fighting us. We are continuing to advance the front. We are at and around Moscow and St. Petersburg, the Russian capital. It looks as though we are just about to win this battle against the British, but it is just taking quite some time, and it is no longer the priority. We did defeat that massive Chinese army, so this giant group is able to just march forward, and we will attempt to just continue to clean out the areas around. We did win against the British, so that's great news. We're going to let our armies heal up for a while before we do anything else. We'll take the Ottoman Aegean Islands as well, and hopefully we'll be able to get something else. I'm not entirely sure yet at this point. Sadly, we're also losing some people in Caglari, uh, the southern half of Sardinia. I completely forgot how to spell it and wasn't able to find it at that point, although I do find it in a little while. Meanwhile, our armies are getting a bit bogged down against the Russians. That's not too terribly surprising, although we're winning all the battles, and that's the most important thing. Apparently, enemy forces are making it into and behind our lines, which I find rather tedious to deal with. Although, ultimately, that does mean they're in small groups that are easy to defeat. So maybe I shouldn't be too uh, judgmental about that, or too worried. Our armies continue to row forward to the east, and we're definitely seeing a larger number of Chinese troops than we had previously. We're going to switch our ruling party to fascist and hold another election. Why fascist? Well, because at this point we may as well play with the fire that they're going to launch a coup attempt. Are they going to launch a coup attempt? I couldn't say, but uh, we're definitely risking it at this point. Although really we only need to add maybe one or two additional war goals to get everything that we want. And yeah, we, we don't really need to worry about jingoism so much in constant elections. And if we're going to have to be keep, if we're going to have to constantly be fighting revolts throughout our countryside, we may as well be a totalitarian state, such as fascists always sort of love to have and that might give us some some benefits to rebel suppression. And we'll also be able to pass new reforms if we do have a coup, which at this point is the most important thing. 
Now the British do have another army, so what we're going to do is encircle it and then just leave it alone with small armies around it. We're also going to march into British India. They do still have 600-ish thousand men in their army, and their armies are the most difficult for us to fight. Luckily, we took a portion of India from the Portuguese or the French, one group, some European country, so we do have a foothold if we can just reconquer it. Now, we are losing battles. It turns out those are armies just being created on Sardinia. There's really nothing we can do about that. I also realized just now that we were actually at war with Moldavia and Wallachia this entire time since the moment we went to war with the Ottomans, so we're just going to march into them and hopefully clean them out. Now we are passing the Urals, we're dropping more and more troops off in British India in order that we may hopefully uh, defeat them and make this work. We lost a battle, we lost two battles against Moldavia and Wallachia because, as always, it seems like I always underestimate the ability of their uh, countries to actually fight. So that's unfortunate, we're just going to send every army we have in to just overwhelm them with sheer numbers as we cannot afford to let them win against us. We need to clean that front up now. Uh, we are cleaning up the British, on the other hand, that's basically cleaned up, and we can move forward from there against them. We're defeating the Russian armies that have managed to leak in, and we're going to try to bring some forces to India without defeating the Iraqi nationalists as we want them to win. Now this battle is going rather poorly in India, we're going to drop off some additional troops and hopefully t maintain that. Mexico lost some land in their war, sad for Mexico. And unfortunately we lost a battle, we had to pull back, our army was being just trounced. Uh, we're going to go back and defend that group in India once more, there's a pretty significant enemy force, hopefully we'll get there in time. We can't switch our government so we're going to be liberal for a little while, hopefully that's not too much of a problem. And we're going to bring our navies around so we can pick up more forces, still avoiding Iraqi nationalists, and just bring everyone that we can, because this Indian expedition is going to determine whether or not we can actually fully occupy uh, independent India to get our war goal later on. So that's a very important front. Too bad we don't have enough uh, escorts and capital ships to really defend at sea if the British start to contest it. Although so far we haven't had to worry about that. We're also just pressing even deeper into Russia, and hopefully we'll get here. We did not get there in time. Luckily, they moved away, and there's an Irish rebellion, and most of their army was Irish. So not only can we drop some troops off, we might be able to move in after them and destroy them. And let's see, let's load this army up. We can go ahead. The British are just mar marching away from us. They're so quick. It's rather annoying. And... It looks as though Moldavia and Wallachia have gotten their independence because the Ottomans had a revolution. Great news. Uh, we're also able to fight off this massive Chinese army, which had nearly destroyed one of our smaller forces, and it is essentially encircled. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring it to a complete collapse and then justify our casus belli against the Egyptians, right as our... Uh, War goal is ready against the Indians, and we've got a foothold so we can go and occupy them. We're also just about to finish that battle. 300,000 Chinese troops are gone. We're going to just spread around. There we go, we've occupied India. And now we can see about making peace. Just because I think it would be a bit tedious to roll all the way in through China, we'll see just how far we have to go. You see they will accept their annexation. Sadly, they will not accept peace. Here, um, we've lost 85,000 to the Turkish 278. That has gone up to 200,000 versus 350,000. Um, I might have been unclear. They will not accept peace, so we do have to go into China. Our losses against China were 852,000 to about 4 million. They are now 1.5 million to 6.4 million. Thank you very much for watching.